Hello, Pansy Chapel. It's great to be with you again. Today we're looking at Job chapters 8 through 10, and uh, we're going to dive right in. So in Job chapter 8, we are introduced to the second of Job's friends. His name is Bildad the Shuhite, and uh, some interesting things about Bildad. If you look at verses 3 to 4, we're just going to do a quick summary here, maybe of some chunks of this passage, to try and bring some clarity to what's going on here in this conversation. So if you look in verses 3 and 4, you can clearly see that Bildad is placing himself, it's, it's a little subtle, but Bildad is placing himself on the judgment seat together with God. He is, he is assuming that he understands that God is perfectly just, and my assumption would match what I think God is, is doing here. And so he places himself along with God on the judgment seat of Christ, and that is wrong. He is directly violating what Jesus teaches in Matthew chapter 7 in the Sermon on the Mount, that we should not judge lest we also bring judgment on ourselves. And so Bildad is, is subtle about it, but he is essentially by implication saying, I understand justice perfectly, just like God does. And then if you look in verses 5 through 22, you can see that Bildad describes lots of things about God, the blessings of God, and actually again, factually, many of his statements are correct. And, and I think there's some awesome things in there about the character of God. And I would encourage you to meditate on some of those things. I particularly love verse 21, where it says that he will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Like there is this acknowledgement that Jesus can bring joy into even very difficult situations. And so meditate on some of those things. But again, remember that Bildad is unfairly assuming that Job's hardships are because of his sin in his life. And that we've got to be careful of as well. And he misses the point that Job brings out in chapter 9, verse 2, where Job acknowledges, yes, I, I understand that. And he says, how can a mortal be righteous before God? And that is a correct statement also. Job acknowledges that while he declares his innocence in terms of why he's being punished, he acknowledges no one can be righteous before the Lord without a mediator, without help of some kind. And so he's already going to lead into this aspect about him seeking a mediator, which we're going to look at in chapter 10, but staying in chapter 9. So then you look in verses 3 to 15 of Job chapter 9, and you can see Job make some powerful statements about who God is that are actually remarkably um, like Job says them in incre incredible humility, because even in the middle of his desperate situation, he acknowledges some awesome things about who God is. And I just love that he, he, he leads his heart. He declares what he knows to be true about God. But then you look in verses 16 through 18, and he kind of almost seems to momentarily forget who God is. And he lets this, his circumstances and how he feels take over about how he feels about things. And we've got to be careful. We so easily, I so easily do that, where I sometimes forget about how great and how good God is, let my circumstances dictate how I feel. And that leads Job into this place of, again, bemoaning the fact about all the challenges that he's going through. And now he's, again, lost sight about the Lord. And now we're just in difficulty. And you look in verses 19 through 32, and Job is just focusing on these difficulties. And in reality, we've all got to wrestle through some of these things at some point in our lives. If we are following Jesus, Jesus clearly makes the statement in John that says, if we are in this, this world, we will have trouble. We will face persecution. And we've all got to wrestle through that at some point in our lives. And those are challenging um, questions to sometimes know where to find answers for. And so Job uh, focuses on those things, but then it brings him to this place, this beautiful place in verse 33, kind of through 35, where he recognizes, I need a mediator. If only there was a mediator that could help me. And there is in Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter two talks about how Jesus is our mediator. And then in chapter 10, Job talks about, he goes on to just bemoan life and he has lost heart. And I think if we're honest, sometimes we have all been there. I think about Job. I think about Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8, where it says he despaired even of life. I think about Jesus, how on the cross, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think many of us sometimes feel like that in life. But the, here's the thing. It would be a huge mistake to stop reading Job. Imagine if we were to do that. Imagine if we stopped reading Job here in chapter 10. We would be left in a very dark place. And, and, and we've got to remember, it's not the end of the story for Job. 
It wasn't the end of the story for Paul. It's not the end of the story for Jesus when he's calling out to the Lord on the cross. And it's not the end of the story for you in the middle of your difficult circumstance. We have a mediator in Jesus Christ. Call out to him and lean on him, lean into him for to be your mediator. So some quick questions that we can maybe ask ourselves today. Ask God to reveal someone who's deeply struggling in your life and then ask him how to pray for that person. Then if God gives you something to pray for that person, before you share anything, ask the Lord what he has revealed to you that was just for you to know and how to pray for that person or what he may have shown you that you can now share with that person to encourage them. And then let's just spend some time praising Jesus that he is our wonderful mediator in times of difficulty and in times of rejoicing. Blessings in your day. 